Thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. This message is for you because you matter to us. I'm Megan Brusicki, co-senior pastor of Community Church, and you're about to hear the truth of God's word in an encouraging way with practical steps to help you move forward. In fact, just by watching right now, you're on the path to living fully alive, and we wanna help you. Check out community.church to experience a service live online or to get more info, or come join us at one of our locations. We'll save you a seat. Enjoy today's message. This weekend, I'm really excited about the message we're going to hear because this weekend is what we're calling Small Groups Weekend here at our church. We believe it's so important that we are together in relationships with people who are going after the same things in life. We're believing that we could encourage each other, have the difficult conversations. And honestly, I really do believe that your breakthrough for 2020 is so dependent on being around the right people, getting in the right groups. And so excited for this weekend, we're gonna hear from one of our executive Pastors, Pastor Sam Powell, really great communicator to encourage us to get connected, to be in relationships. So would you stand up to your feet today? Would you welcome Pastor Sam as he comes to preach this weekend's message? Well, good morning, everybody. You guys can have a seat. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, Happy New Year once again. I'm excited to have all of you with us. All you guys watching online, excited to have you with us. Everybody at the Suffolk campus, everybody at our God Behind Bars campus, the Rivers Correctional Facility, all you guys here at Western Branch, excited about 2020, the new year and what God has for us. Quick question for you. How many of you watched the ball drop this past week? All right. How many of you would have watched it if it was four hours earlier? Okay. I don't know if you're like me, but I feel like it gets later every year. I feel like they keep pushing the time back. They keep saying it's midnight, but I'm not sure it's true, uh, but it feels like that. So we had some friends over New Year's Eve, uh, had a little bit of fun with that, played some games, and then the ball drops, and we all watched that together. And then you're in this moment, the ball's dropped. It's gotten a little mellow, dramatic for me at this point. It's not as exciting as it used to be, but we're watching it drop. Yay, New Year, we're excited. And then you're sitting on the couch, and you're like, so what do I do now? I kind of want to go to bed, but people are still at my house. And... Um, <laughs> So I'm sitting there and I'm watching the TV and, and then a few minutes into it, there's this infomercial that comes on and uh, I'm watching this <laughs> and I'm having one of these moments where I, I can't really believe what I'm seeing right now. I'm watching them advertise and I won't even say what the item is because I don't want to offend anybody. That's a whole different message. Um, so like, I'm watching this and, and I'm going, who, I'm thinking to myself, who would ever think it's a good idea to buy this? <laughs> Like, who, who are the people they're trying to market to right now? Then I remember it's 1 o'clock in the morning, New Year's Eve. There's probably a market for somebody to ready to do something, right, uh, in this moment. And I, but I got to think about infomercials in general, and, and they work. I mean, they work. That's why they do them. I got some flex sale at my house. Don't judge me for that. But, I mean, they work, right? And, and I think one of the reasons they work is because the, they, the pressure they put behind it, they make you feel like you just have to do this because they say, don't wait. Order now. Don't wait. Order now. Wait. If you order today, there's more, right? All these things. I was like, only 10 left. Order now. We know they're lying. <laughs> we know there's way more than 10 left, but they're trying to get some, buy, right? But you watch these things, and, and here's what I actually thought about in that moment um, for you. Uh, I was getting ready for this weekend and been thinking and praying through some things, and as I'm sitting there going, wow, somebody would actually buy this right now. And it kind of hit me that, isn't it crazy? Some of the things we can get talked into that we think that somebody's convinced us is best for our life that really has no real significance. And yet there are things in our life that have the absolutely most significance and we don't give it enough attention. And as we were coming to this weekend for, for talking about small groups and the relationships we need in our life, I feel like that's probably one of those things that we easily overlook because we have relationships but do we always have the right ones we need? And uh, sometimes we don't give it enough attention. And so my prayer today is that, uh, is that we would we would really engage in what God would have for us for 2020 when it comes to the people that are in our life. I'm calling this message, don't wait. <laughs> don't wait, because I don't want you to miss out on what God would have for you this year when it comes to the people that are in your life. And so let's pray and see what God would have for us today. So God, we thank you in this moment that the she word speaks so much truth to us about the relationships you desire for each and every one of us. And, and God, let's pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would speak into our hearts uh, what you have for each and every one of us that this really could be the best year we've ever had. In Jesus' name, amen. 
And so we're going into this idea of small groups, and, and I will tell you that if you're here and you've been in small groups, you already are convinced small groups are good for your life and you're a part of them, great, continue to do that. Uh, I think this is going to inspire you, remind you of some things, uh, help me, me get you back to, to why you were in groups in the first place. If you've never been in a group and don't even know what that is, I, I want you to really lean in because I think, I do believe this is one of the best things for your life. I believe this, we believe this is a church, this is what God says is true. And so when we talk about the word groups, maybe you don't even know what groups are. You've heard us talk about small groups. You're not even sure what that is. It's your first time here today. Groups are simply what we are, are the people that gather together outside of the weekend for the purpose of growing into who God wants them to be. It's just coming out, outside of the weekend, getting together and saying, I want to keep going further in, in my walk with Jesus. That's what groups are. And it's a vital part of the experience that God has for each and every one of us in the journey of life that we have. And I would tell you that over the years, I, I've been passionate about groups. I've, I've been so grateful for the people I've gotten to meet over the years through the groups I've been a part of through this house. And, and I would tell you, I was thinking, uh, just being reminded of, uh, of a guy that I got to know in a group years ago, that if it wasn't for us being in a group together, it's two people that their past probably would have never crossed. Uh, probably would have never thought to have a conversation together, probably wouldn't have thought we had things in common together. Uh, he's in a different generational age group than I'm in. And, but yet, we're in this group together uh, at church, and we got to know each other. And I can tell you, he became like one of my best friends, somebody that otherwise I probably would have never had any interaction with. And we just really clicked and got to know each other, really got involved in each other's life, really helped each other grow in so many ways, loved spending time together. I got to help support him and his family during his dad's funeral. I got to do his son's wedding. I mean, just really getting engaged in each other's life. That, this, that would have never happened apart from there was a group that we were both a part of. And it was a, it's a life-changing relationship that, that we still have today. And we haven't been in a group together in years, but we still have a good relationship and love spending time together. That's what groups are. They're a huge part of my life. They always have been. And I encourage that they should be a huge part of you because we're going into 2020 and it's a new year and, and so we're all thinking about what might this year be? What might this year be for my life? How can this year be better than last year? Then when you want to fast forward to December of 2020, you want to be able to look back and go, yes, this was a good year for my life. Well, how do I get there? How do I help make that possible. And so I want you to write this down if you're taking notes, because I'm going to give you a glimpse into your future right now. If you want to know what 2020 is going to like for your life, I'm going to help you see into your future. So write this down if you're taking notes. If you're not taking notes, your first new habit of 2020 is taking notes, and you're going to start right now. And so we're all taking notes. Here's what you should write down. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. You want to know what to expect in 2020? You want to know in December what you're going to reflect back on for this year? Look at the people you surround yourself with this year. It's going to be the greatest indicator of what you can expect to experience throughout this year. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Who are the people you spend the most time with? Who are your friends? Who is your squad? Who are the ones that when you're doing things, those are the ones that are typically around you in life? Because that is who is going to influence you more than anyone else. I can tell you, if you want the best year you've ever had, and every single one of us, this is not some crazy thing to think about, every single one of us can have our best year this year. Here's how. If we become more like Jesus, we will have our best year. That's it. If your goals become more like Jesus, you will have the best year you've had. But that's not going to happen if you're not surrounded by the right people who are going to help point you in the right direction for that to happen in your life. So we've got to have the right people in our life to see that in results. So who do you spend time with? That may mean there's some people in your life already that you can look to to help you with that. There may mean there's some people in your life right now that aren't the right people to help you get where you're trying to go. There may mean there's some people in your life that need to be a part of your life that aren't currently part of your life. Who are you surrounding yourself with this year to see who you want to become when this year is over? Proverbs 13, 20 says this, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. I would tell you that when I first started following Jesus and really wanting to do life the right way, uh, this is one of the things I had to deal with. And I did. I, I asked people, what can I do? And they're like, you should get no group. They'll, it'll help you. And so I did. And I got some new friends. And can I tell you, some of the friends I already had were a bunch of fools. They really were. I'm just being honest. And I've told them that. We know. We've had conversations about it. There was a bunch of fools I was hanging out with. And I was doing a lot of foolish things. I was getting a lot of foolish results in my life. Then I started getting involved more in church. And I got connected to a group. And there was people, some new friends in my life, some new people who were pointing me in a different direction that used a different sense of wisdom that didn't come from the things of this world that helped change who I am today. 
It changes things. It changes who you are and who you're becoming. Think about this. We already live life in small group, whether you realize that or not. At your home, at work, at school, you see small groups everywhere you go. Maybe it's around the water cooler or the coffee pot, wherever it may be. Maybe around the locker in the cafeteria. You walk around, you see small groups of people. People that typically meet in the same place around the same time and have the same conversations. You already live that out. You already see it happen all the time. The, the thing to think about is what are those groups about in my life? Those groups that I'm a part of throughout my day, are they the best groups for me? What are they about? Are they talking about just what's going on in life? Are they talking about what's going on in the world? Are they just talking about other people? What am I getting out of this group, these people that are influencing my life? Because sometimes we know what this group is about and if it's helpful for our life. And sometimes we're not even aware that these people we're spending time with really may not be the best influences we need. It's just the people we've always spent time with. But if we want to become who God wants us to be, we've got to make sure we're surrounding ourselves with people that God wants to help us get there. And so we've got to look at who are the people in our lives. Uh, and I got thinking about how has group helped me and how have I seen it help others and how can I believe it can help you. And here's what I thought about with this idea that we live life in small groups is what I love about group, one of the things I've learned to appreciate most about group, it's just a place where I realize that people that are coming into that place together, wherever you may meet in a group, that there's no agenda other than I'm just trying to be better and I want to help you get there too. There's no other group I've ever been a part of that was about that. That I just want to be better. I want to be more of who God wants me to be and if I can help you be more of who God wants you to be, then I want to do that. And that's what groups are about. I love that there's no, there's no selfless agenda. There's no self-absorbed agenda. It's like, I just want to be better. I want you to be better. What a great environment to put yourself in. We would just want to be more like Jesus. But often what happens is we, we have a lot of circles of friends. We have a lot of people in our life and we confuse the amount of people in our life with the quality of our life. And what I would tell you today is it's not about the amount, it's about the quality. Amen. It's about the quality of people in your life. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. It doesn't matter how many likes you get. Doesn't matter how many views your videos receive. Doesn't matter if you, every room you walk into, there's a dozen people that know your name. If the people that are involved in all those situations aren't about Jesus and care about you, they're not gonna help you get to where God wants you to be in life. Amen. You've got to have some of those people in your life. You've got to have people that know who you are, know where you're trying to go, believe in what you're about, and are helping you get there. It doesn't matter how many you have if they're not the right ones. God wants us to have that. Help us be who God has called us to be. 1 Corinthians 13, 15, 33 says, don't be misled, bad company corrupts good character. So often we're on a journey of trying to go further ahead in life and we don't realize the influences around us that are holding us back or the influences that we need to help us get there. And that's what groups can do. I love that I can go to a group of people where I don't have to impress anybody. I don't worry about how I'm gonna impress anybody in that group. I don't have to one-up anybody or worry about somebody trying to one-up me in everything that we do. I love that I can go to a group of people where it really is just about how can we get better. And when you get into an environment like that where people don't have their own agendas other than let's get better together, that's where relationships really come alive. That's where authentic relationship begins to happen. Proverbs 18, 24 says, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. I will tell you that there has been so many people over the years I've been in groups with that have become my best friends, that have become people that I depend on for so many things in life in so many different ways and how we're there for each other. And I would say, and for my particular situation, there are numerous people that I've spent time with in group that are closer to me than my actual brother. One of the main reasons is, is because they're also trying to point toward Jesus and it helps me get there. They're closer than a brother to me. And for me, I'm so, so grateful, so fortunate I've been able to develop those relationships to help me get to where I'm trying to be. But here's the thing. We are created for relationship. We need this. And I don't have to convince you that we're created for relationship. I, I believe we already all know that. I think we already know just inside of us, we're just kind of created to know we need relationship in our life. That if we didn't have relationships in our life, life would be pretty sad. <laughs> It'd be really lonely very painful without real relationships in our life that really, it doesn't matter 
any level of success or accomplishment we would have, if there aren't people in our life to share it with, it's really pointless. Because relationships matter more than anything else. And culture just reflects this truth over and over again. I wanted to share with you, I want to hit a couple different generations here today that just points, that just kind of proves this point of we know relationships are the most important thing and we're drawn to relationship. I want to share with you some words. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see the troubles are all the same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. Here's, here's another one. I'll be there for you. When the rain starts to pour, I'll be there for you like I've been there before. I'll be there for you because you're there for me to... Sorry. Here's another one. It's not a song. Let's squat up. Join my party. Let's drop here. Here's a med kit. I'll reboot you. Now, whether it's Cheers, Friends, or Fortnite, <laughs> clearly relationships matter more than anything else. And it shows that over and over, we're drawn to it. The most popular things in culture are developed around relationship. Why? Because we're made for that and we're desperate to have it. We need that in our life. So here's what I want you to know. Write this down. We are better together how we're meant to be. We are better together. I'm not saying that's the best pickup line you want to use. I'm just saying it's a good truth for our life. It's just a good truth for our life. We exist as a church. You've heard this. We exist as a church that people can live fully alive. That's why we exist. One of the reasons that matters so much is because there are a lot of people who settle in life, especially when it comes to this area of relationships. So often we will settle. We will settle for, well, I've got some friends. There's some good friends. Yeah, there's some things I'd like to talk about, but I don't really talk to my friends about that stuff. I mean, yeah, I've got these people over here and those people over there. I mean, this is who I am, and I'm kind of okay where I'm at now. I mean, that's who they are. I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't, want, I, I don't want to make them change anything about who they are. That's, that's, that's up to them. And, and we just kind of settle for where we're at in life and the people that we have in our life. And, and what's interesting to me when I start having conversations with people about, about the relationships they have, I'm like, man, who are the friends in your life? And I'll say, oh, this guy and this person, this person, and, and we're good friends, and they're there for me. If I need anything, they're there for me. I'm like, when was the last time, like, you know, that you, just, you just told me about what was going on? Uh, we don't talk about that stuff. <laughs> and it's amazing to me what, we would, what most people consider their good friends or even their best friends, how often there's not real conversations that happen. And we settle. We settle for just kind of where, where we are. And eventually we even convince ourselves that where we are is good enough and we don't need anything else. And God would say, no, I want so much more for you. I want you to experience authentic, genuine relationship because it will transform your life. It will change who you are and the experiences that you have. And we need that in our life. We need people that can help us see things a little differently sometimes and that are willing to speak it into us. Proverbs 12, 15 says, fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. We can kind of just do it on our own and think we're going to figure this out and we'll make the most of it. But we can trust what God says and what others say that point us to Jesus that this is actually best for our life. Because when that happens, we get better and we experience more. God does something in us and he begins to do things through us. In those moments, Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A quarter of three strands is not quickly broken. And I know if we're honest today, there's a lot of us say, yeah, I, I, there's many times I felt like I was all on my own and I felt very overpowered and I felt very overwhelmed. How great is it to know that you have the support you need in life that you don't have to feel that way? God says, no, that's my design for you. That's my plan for you is to have those people where you don't have to feel that way ever again because you have the right people in your life. There is strength in numbers, but there's strength in the right numbers and the right people. And being part of a group offers to us what God wants for us. That's what it is. It's just a way to offer to us in our lives what God wants for us, healthy, authentic relationships that helps become more of who he wants us to be. That's why we have groups. Groups help me connect relationally and grow spiritually. That is the purpose of our groups here at Community Church. 
And if, we're, and if we're at all honest, and if we all think about what my 2020 looked like, do I want to have healthier relationships in my life this year? I think the answer would say yes. Do I want to grow spiritually this year? I would hope the answer would be yes. Well, if you want that to happen, then you need to have God and you need to have other people in your life to make that happen. Otherwise, you'll go to December and you'll go, well, it didn't work. I'm not where I wanted to be. God says, who are you putting in your life? Who are you surrounding yourself to help you get there? Because there's going to be people in our life that need to tell us things we don't want to hear. Amen. Especially when we don't want to hear. <laughs> there's going to be people in our life that need to show us things that we don't even see in ourselves to know what's going on. And there needs to be people in our life that can push us in the right direction, especially when distractions and temptations are coming our way. We need those people in our life. Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We need these people in our life that will help keep us moving us in the direction that God has for us. That doesn't mean it's always easy or fun. Sometimes there's a little friction involved for that to happen. Iron sharpens iron. But here's the interesting thing about this analogy that the Bible uses with iron sharpens iron. You can take two pieces of metal and you can grind it together. A couple of things are going to happen. You can create some sparks you can create some dings in it. You can, you can damage the metal. You can make some awful noises by doing that. Can I tell you, most of our relationships are just like that. It's like two pieces of metal just clanging together, and it's just noisy, and it's just ugly, and it's just damaging. Or you can take two pieces of metal, and you can grind them together with intentionality and purpose that it actually sharpens both pieces and makes them stronger. That God says, that's what I want for you. I want people in your life that, yeah, you might have some friction sometimes, but it's only for the purpose of making you stronger because you're intentional with the friction that you're having that is pointing you toward me. And at the end of the day, you're going to be sharper and you're going to be stronger because of it. We can keep having relationships that cause friction that just really end up in damaging ourselves, or we can have relationships in our life, yeah, yeah, there might be friction, but I'm going to be better when it's over because they're for me and they're pointing me to Jesus. Proverbs 20. 7, 6, wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. Can I tell you, we need some genuine relationship, not just good platitudes from people who don't even really care about our life. That's what we need. You think about this idea of iron sharpens iron and, and uh, wounds from a sincere friend. I, I was in group years ago and, and we, were, we were discussing the message from the weekend and it was about priorities in our life and are you setting the priorities kind of in the right way to, to really be who you want to be and experience what God has for you, that kind of thing. And we're going around talking about how do you spend your time and what are your priorities and kind of got to me and I'm like, well, I mean, I, I'm all about Jesus and church and family and, and just helping people. And, uh, you know, I'm in this moment where I'm like, yeah, I, I think I'm good on my priorities and that's where all my time and energy goes and, and I think I'm doing good in this, in this direction. And one of the guys in the group says, really? You think you're doing good at that? <laughs> I was like, yeah? He's like, you watch like 20 hours of ESPN every day, and you listen to ESPN on the radio every time you're in the car, and all you talk about is sports, and you know every team, and every stat, and every game, and every player, and everything that's happening. And who, he's like, how do you know all that if you don't spend all the time doing that? I was like, well, I mean, I do spend a lot of time on that. And he's like, yeah, I think if you spent less time on that, more time on things of God, you might be better off. And I was like, you're a jerk. <laughs> that's really how I felt, jerk. You don't know me. Who are you talking to? I got this. That's kind of how I felt in that moment, right? I, I didn't. And I just kind of blew him off in that moment. And I went home. And I went home. You know what I did when I got home? I did what I always do. I took out my Bible. I read my Bible and I prayed for three hours. No. I went home and I did what I always did. I turned on the TV to ESPN. <laughs> and in that moment, I was like, oh. <laughs> That's what he was talking about. <laughs> Maybe he had a point. And here's what I will tell you. Something that simple, that conversation changed my life. Because honestly, I had to reflect in that moment is, how right is he right now? Because I wasn't aware of how much time and energy I was putting into something that really wasn't significant, that was taken away from something that really was, and it made me change my habits that year. And because I changed my habits with more focus on Jesus, it actually helped me become more the person that I was trying to be. I'm so thankful he said something. I didn't like it in the moment. A few sparks might have flew. But I was sharper and I was better because of it. That's what can happen with authentic relationship and people who help want to point you in the right direction. And that's what the Bible wants for us. And we can help each other in this journey, help each other move in what God would have for us, experience what God would have for us, not for our own lives, but to make a difference in others. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says this, 
Let us consider how to stir one another to, another toward love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. You look at the words of Jesus, and dozens and dozens of times, Jesus tells us there's things we should do with our life. There's commands that he gives us, and so many of them cannot be done alone. They're meant to be done in relationship. I've written down just a few of these. Love one another, encourage one another, challenge one another, celebrate one another, forgive one another, serve one another. You can't do these things by yourself. We're not meant to. God designed us for relationship. He designed us for healthy relationship with others who are going in a direction that's honoring to him that makes a difference in the lives of people. He says, when you start looking to me and get other people in your life that are also looking toward me and you're gonna have some authentic conversation, you're gonna start to experience some things you haven't experienced before. You're gonna start making a difference you haven't made before and it's gonna change your life. But you have to get the right people around you. So then why don't more people connect to a group and say, yeah, I want this for my life? If this is really better for my life, why wouldn't I do it? And there's some typical barriers that I've heard over the, over the years, and, and I understand them. I wrote a few of them down. One is, but I don't know anyone. I don't know who to connect with. I, I don't know somebody in a group, so, so how am I supposed to know which group to connect to? I would tell you, if you don't know anyone, then just join a group, and you'll get to know someone, <laughs> and you'll fix that problem. Just saying. Sometimes we overthink it. It's awkward to connect to new people. It's, it's hard for me to connect to new people. Great. How do you know the people you already know? Because at some point you start having conversations with them. And yes, it may have been awkward. But if you know you're going to a group of people where they're not there to judge you, they're not there to impress you, they're just there for you and to help you go in the direction that's best for your life, then, get, then, then fight through that awkwardness because it's best for you. It's worth it. People say, I don't have time for a group. I'm too busy. Stop watching 12 hours of ESPN. You'll have more time for group. <laughs> I'm not ready to share things. I don't want to be vulnerable. It's real. A lot of people are like, yeah, I, was, I, I want to go to group. I want to get better, but I know if I do, I might have to share some things I don't want to really talk about. Yeah, that's a real barrier in your life, and you have to decide, am I going to settle for where I'm at right now, or am I going to push through that because I want to be better on the other side? I don't want to be challenged. I don't like being told what I need to do. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> if I go, they might challenge me on some things. Yes. Next. I tried it and it didn't work. I've been to a group before. It wasn't really a good experience for me. Okay. You know groups are made of people and none of them are perfect. You're not always going to connect with everybody you, you get around. That's okay. Just because you tried a group, you might not have gotten what you think you wanted to get out of that. Don't let that keep you from trying another one because you will connect with the right people at the right seasons and God will show up. If you continue to be faithful, you'll find the connections that you need. Don't let that be a reason to keep you from doing what's best for your life. If I really want to experience all that I can in 2020, if I really want to be all that God's called me to be and, be and go further into what he would have for my life, then I have to believe this next statement and I have to own it in my heart. My relationship with Jesus and others helps me live fully alive. If I want this year to be my best year, if I want to know what living fully alive feels like, I have to believe my relationship with Jesus and my connection to others helps that happen. In fact, I could say, you could even change it and say my relationship with Jesus and others is how I'm gonna live fully alive. You can't, you can't live fully alive apart from these two things. As so I would tell you, if you're here today, I don't know your story, I don't know if this is your first time in church ever, first time in a long time, or you've been coming for months or years. If you haven't got this first part settled, that's where it needs to start, my relationship with Jesus. Because that is absolutely your first step to living fully alive. There's no other step you can take. That is your first step to living fully alive, is a relationship with Jesus and understanding that he is God, he loves me, he is for me, he has plans for my life and he will do whatever he has said he's gonna do. He is faithful in every way. His promises are true and if I will trust him with my life, that is the best decision I, will ever, I can ever make. When you get to that place, it changes everything but it starts there and then you surround yourself with other people who feel the same way and you start to see how God moves. I have to believe that's true for my life. You think about what groups can offer and, and what that can mean for your life and who it can help you be. I will challenge you to go look at some of the other groups of people in your life and go, are they helping me get there? Are they helping me get there? Who are these other people I need to get into my life so I can be who I want to be? I've seen a lot of things happen in groups over the years. I've been fortunate to watch marriages completely restored in groups. I've watched families come back together from people that are in groups. I've watched 
healings happen during prayer in groups, miracle healings. I've seen people's finances go completely the opposite direction in the way that they would want them because of people in groups and conversations they've had and prayer that we've had for one another. I've seen addictions broken from people that have been grouped together. I mean, I've watched God show up over and over and over again because when you come together for the sake of looking at Jesus together and trying to make each other better, God is faithful. He always shows up. He does incredible things and you get to be a part of it and you get to have some of those experiences. I was, I was talking about this message the other day with my wife, just kind of getting ready for the weekend and, and uh, just, you know, obviously we've been in a lot of groups over the years and she goes, yeah, the one that always, the, the woman always stands out to her. She's just probably uh, her, her like main thing that, she hangs on to why groups are so important to her and how it made such a difference early on in her life. It is, is years ago, uh, when we were in a group, her dad was fighting cancer and, and he eventually lost that battle and, and he died. And during that week, uh, and if you've lost a parent or, or a loved one like that, you know that that week surrounding that time frame can be pretty much just a big blur, <laughs> right? And, and she's going through this season of losing her dad. And I remember her telling me about a week after he passed, um, she goes, gosh, I just don't know how it all went down. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, I don't remember how we planned the funeral, how people showed up. I don't remember how the reception got, happened. I don't remember. All I know is just every day there was people there. They were, they were asking me what I needed. They were loving on me. They were taking care of me. Like, it all just happened. I'm like, yeah. She's like, it was just all the people in our group. Just like, they just took care of it all. I'm like, yeah, that's what they're supposed to do. <laughs> and I remember the impact it made on her. To go, gosh. These are the kind of people I want in my life. Well, she had done group before that and she'd appreciate it, but it just took on a whole nother level. And she realized, I want to be that for other people. Every group I'm in, I want to help love and support other people, whatever they're going through. It might be somebody challenging you on how much time you spend in sports. It might be people that are encouraging you and helping you through one of the most difficult moments of your life. But you can't have either one of those experiences if you're not surrounded by the right people to have them with. God says, I want this for you. What if 2020, you never felt alone again because you were surrounded by the right people? What if 2020, you felt more confident in who you were and who you are becoming than ever before? What if 2020 actually is the best year you've ever had because you put a focus on Jesus and having the right people in your life to experience all that God would have for you? Ephesians 5, it says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. What's the Lord's will? We've said this before. Lord's will for you is to live fully alive. That's what he desires for your life. So it says, so live wise, make the most of every opportunity. So I want to make the most of every opportunity. We believe so much in this as a church. We believe, as Pastor Michael said, that breakthrough in 2020 is for each and every one of us. We believe relationships is a way to make that happen. We were going to take time right now in the service to help you take those steps if you need to take them. As you walked in, we were handing out some papers. We had some group information on it. If you have that, go ahead and grab that now. I want you to look at it. If you don't have one or didn't grab one, we have them in our Connect Lounge. Go by our Connect Lounge after service to do this. But I want you to take a moment right now to look at that. Because what that paper is, is a list of groups that we have starting next week. People that we want you to connect to, to start experiencing some of these authentic relationships and things that God has for your life. And we want you to make a decision. What's the group that I see that might be best for me because I want to, I want to experience what God has for me. I want this to really be my year of breakthrough. We want you to see you decide on a group here today and not have to think about it later. Why? Because here's the last thing I would tell you. It's, it's just an infomercial now. The time is now. The time is now. Don't wait. Don't wait. Because why would you ever wait on something that God says is best for your life? If God says this is good for your life, then how can, they, how can anything make you think, go, well, I mean, I can do that later. <laughs> I'm not ready right now. I don't have time right now. I have these barriers that I'm working through and, and I will, or I'm just not ready for that. But if God says, this is, this is good for your life, my prayer is you would say, yeah, and I want it. So I want you to look over the options. And real quick, I'm gonna explain a few of the things that are on that sheet uh, because you may be new to groups and you, I want to make sure you have some clarity. One of the things you're gonna see on there is something called message-based groups. What does that mean? A message-based group is simply what we talk about on the weekend, the message we hear, you hear on the weekend, 
there are questions developed around that message for you and that group to talk about, go a little bit deeper with. How do I really apply this in my life to continue moving in the direction that God has for me based on what we talked about in service this weekend? That's what those groups are designed around. So maybe you wanna get in a group of people that are just taking what you hear on the weekend and just, I just wanna keep moving forward with that and what God would show me for my life. We have some, what we call large groups with small group studies that are happening. What that means is it's a large group teaching, but then you'll be broken out into small groups to have discussion and relationship building. A couple of those that we're doing is one's called How to Study the Bible. We're doing the Bible in a year right now. I hope you're joining in on that. But maybe you're at a place, whether you're doing it or not, and going, I'm not sure I understand the Bible when I read it or what it's really all about. The Bible is alive and active and it is life changing. We want you to know that. And how can you get more out of it? How to Study the Bible might be a good group for you to learn that and to build some relationships with people in the process. Another one is what we call Alpha. That's a large group teaching with some small groups as part of it. Alpha is just helping answering the questions of what, who is Jesus and what does it even mean for my life and why do I even care that church even exists? Like I, don't, I just don't understand all these things. Alpha helps you answer some of those questions. One of the biggest issues we have in life is our finances. One of the biggest struggles people have you want to get your finances right, start doing them God's way. Financial Peace University can help you do that. How does God say do your finances? This is the best way to live out your life and your finances to get some freedom from the stress that comes from finances. And then you're going to see multiple other just studies that, that people are doing. And it may be a good season or the right fit for you right now to go, yeah, that's an area I feel like I could grow in that would help me right now in my life. We encourage you to find one. Which one's right for you? Circle that group. Put your name and information at the bottom of that piece of paper. And in a few minutes, we're gonna have our giving time. And as the offering buckets go by, just drop that, drop that in the bucket as it goes by. The leader of that group is gonna contact you this week, shoot you an email, give you any more details you need, answer any questions you may have. But we wanna see you develop experience and have the relationships God has for you this year. The Lord's will for you is that you will live fully alive. Jesus gave his life so that could happen so that that could happen. What if this year we all decided, let's grow like never before. Let's grow like never before together. Now I promise you, not only would it radically change your life, the ripple effect in your family, in the workplace, in our schools, and our communities would be felt throughout this place in 2020. And we could all look back together and say, man, 2020 was a great year. Because I took the steps I needed to take for who God wanted me to be and for what he wanted me to experience. Would you close your eyes with me as we get ready to pray? God wants so much for you. We want so much for you as a church. The truth is you want so much for yourself. And God's saying, here's the way to get there. You wanna live fully alive. You wanna experience the most out of life and, and you gotta point in the direction of who I am and the people you surround yourself with. And my prayer today is that every single one of you will connect to a group this term and grow and build some relationships. But we just read a verse that don't make the most of every opportunity. And I don't want to miss this opportunity right now. For some of you, that first step to living fully alive is putting your faith and your trust in Jesus. And, and for some of you, that's what you need to do today. And I just want to, as, we're, as we've got our eyes closed in this moment, if that's you, and in 2019, you weren't doing life God's way, and right now, you're, something's stirring inside of you. You're going, I need to do something different. This needs to be a different year. And, and Jesus is the answer. I, I, I just want to, I want to trust him. I want to trust Jesus this year. I want, to, I want to see what he has for my life. I believe in who he is. I, want, I need his forgiveness. I need his grace. I want the hope and the love that he offers my life. If that's you today and you want to see 2020 be a different year than you've ever known. And with everybody's eyes closed, just as a way of expressing that, just, just put your hand in there for a moment. Just say, that's me. It's gonna be a different year. This is my year of breakthrough and it's starting with Jesus. So awesome. Hands going up right now. Suffolk Campus online. This is for you as well. You make the most of every opportunity. So I, I, I'm gonna hang here for a second because I don't want you to miss this. <laughs> this is the first step. It's awesome. You can put your hands down. I want you to pray with me because we're gonna pray. We're gonna declare what's happening in our hearts and the truth of what we just said and believe in what God has for us. And if you're already a follower of Jesus, I want you to pray along with us as, as we do, as we pray as a family, just declaring this together. So here we go, say, Jesus, today I'm deciding to trust you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for the hope you give me. I believe 
that as I trust you and connect with others, this will be my best year ever. In Jesus' name, amen.